The F-7U Cutlass was a carrier-based fighter aircraft developed by Vought for the United States Navy in the early 1950s. It was an ambitious and innovative design that aimed to provide the Navy with a high-performance interceptor capable of engaging enemy aircraft at supersonic speeds. However, the Cutlass faced numerous technical challenges and limitations, resulting in a relatively short operational service and eventual retirement. The Cutlass was Vought's submission in the U.S. Navy contest for a new day fighter with carrier capability, which was assigned on the 1st of June, 1945. With his expertise working on the Messerschmitt P-1110 and P-1112 projects, former Messerschmitt AG senior designer Woldemar Voigt, who oversaw the creation of numerous experimental jet fighters in Nazi Germany, contributed to its design. The specifications were for an aircraft to be capable of flying at 4,000 feet at 600 miles per hour. The design included twin wing mounted tail fins on either side of a short fuselage. Together with broad cord low aspect ratio sweeping wings, the placement of the cockpit was able to provide the pilot excellent views as they approached the carrier. When the competition's winner was declared, the design received company type number V346 and the official designation F7U. Elevons were used to adjust pitch and roll, however, at the time, Vought named these surfaces elevators. The leading edge's whole span was covered with slats and hydraulic power was used for all control surfaces. The pilot was raised 14 feet into the air, and had full steering control thanks to the extremely large nose landing gear strut needed for high angle of attack takeoffs. The high stresses of barrier engagements and side loads imposed during early deployment carrier landings caused failure of the retract cylinder's internal downlocks, causing nose gear failure and resultant spinal injuries to the pilot. Because the aircraft's controls were entirely hydraulic, the pilot could sense the effects of aerodynamic forces on the aircraft through artificial feedback. The hydraulic system ran at 3,000 psi, which is twice as much pressure as any other Navy aircraft. The hydraulic system was unreliable and unprepared for frontline duty. The Westinghouse J-34 turbojets that powered the F-7U were underpowered. Some pilots liked to quip that they, quote, put out less heat than Westinghouse's toasters. Naval aviators referred to the F-7U as the gutless cutlass and or the ensign eliminator, or, in more amiable contexts, the praying mantis. The 14 F-7U-1 aircraft constructed between 1950 and 1952 were not permitted to be used in squadron service. In front of an audience at an airshow, Vought test pilot Paul Thayer ejected from his flaming prototype on July 7, 1950. The F-7U-3 version made its first flight on December 20, 1951, and the Westinghouse J-46 engines, a stronger, three times larger airframe, and an additional repair panel for service access were all features of the F-7U-3. Wally Shira, a test pilot who went on to become an astronaut, said of the F-7U-3 in his memoirs that it was, quote, a widowmaker and prone to accidents. The improved airframe was durable, and test pilots noted that it was a nimble, steady weapons platform that was enjoyable to fly. However, after stalling, the Cutlass would gyrate. Lieutenant Maury Loso discovered that the Cutlass self-corrected after he let go of the control stick to reach with both hands for the ejection lever, after experiencing a stall in his tumbling aircraft. This meant that the Cutlass was exempt from the usual recovery procedures, and the conclusion was later supported by wind tunnel research. Three prototypes were ordered in 1946, and J. Robert Baker, the chief test pilot at Vought, flew the first one on September 29, 1948. The inaugural flight, which departed from Maryland's naval air station, Paxiton River, wasn't without issues. One of the prototypes tested attained a top speed of 625 miles per hour. Orders went out for the F-7U-1 in production, which had specifications substantially similar to the prototypes, as well as the later developed F-7U-2 and F-7U-3 models with more potent engines. The f 72 however, would never be constructed due to issues with the power plant's development, although the F-7U-3 would include several improvements recommended by the tests of Gen 1. The first 16 F-7U-3s were powered by Allison J-35A-29 engines without afterburners. With 288 aircraft outfitting 13 U.S. Navy squadrons, the Gen 3, powered by Westinghouse J-46 WE-8B turbojets, would eventually become the production variant that would stand alone. 
Once the Vought FAU Crusader took flight, further development came to an end. Due to insufficient engine thrust, the F-7U's performance suffered. As a result, carrier landing and takeoff performance were infamously bad. The J-35 had a very critical flaw that caused it to flame out in the rain. Fighter Squadron 81 was the first naval squadron to acquire F-7Us in April 1954. Few squadrons deployed the type, and the majority beached them at shore for a portion of the trip due to operational challenges. Chance Vought examined the accident data in 1957 and discovered that the Cutlass had the greatest accident rate of any Navy swept-wing fighters, with 78 mishaps and 20% of airframes lost in 55,000 flight hours. The poor safety record caused Vice Admiral Harold M. Beauty Martin, Air Commander of the United States Pacific Fleet, to replace Cutlass aircraft with Grumman F-9F-8 Cougars. Now, here is the reason why you may have heard of this obscure aircraft. Two F-7U-1 Cutlasses, Bunos 1244-26 and 1244-27, were flown by the Navy Flight Display Squadron, the Blue Angels, as a side display during their 1953 exhibition season in an effort to promote the new aircraft. Although they were not used as a part of their normal formation demonstration, the aircraft received largely negative reviews from the ground staff and pilots, and it was clear that the type was still going through a number of growing pains. Landing gear failures, hydraulic problems, in-flight engine fires, and one incident where a landing gear door crashed onto a grandstand full of spectators, but miraculously no one was hurt, were among the mishaps. Pilot Lt. Edward Whitey Feitner, the former program manager for the F-7U, lost all hydraulic power during the Blue Angels' maiden outing at an air show in 1953, while executing a complete afterburner takeoff and steep climb. He managed to remain with the airplane until the backup system activated while attempting to acquire enough altitude for an ejection. He caused the left engine to flame out when he struck trees at the end of the runway. He performed a sharp turn, returning the plane to the runway with hydraulic fluid gushing back in a dazzling flame, much to the delight of the spectators. Later, while traveling to an airshow at Naval Air Station Glenview in Chicago, Illinois, another Blue Angel pilot, Lt. Harding McKnight, experienced an engine flameout in his cutlass, forcing him to make an emergency landing at NAS Glenview. Traveling with him, Feitner was redirected to make his landing at Chicago's former Orchard Air Park, which had been expanded and renamed O'Hare Airport. The runway had just been completed and was covered with peach baskets to prevent aircraft from landing until it was opened. Feitner was told to ignore the baskets and land on the new runway, and as a result, Feitner's F-7U became the first aircraft to land on the new runway for Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Following these incidents, the two cutlasses were deemed unsuitable for demonstration flying and were flown to the Naval Air Station Memphis, Tennessee, where they were abandoned to become aircraft maintenance instructional airframes for the Naval Technical Training Center. There are around seven aircraft left that are on display throughout museums, mainly in California and Arizona. What are your thoughts on the accident-prone F-7U? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, then maybe consider subscribing and dropping a like. If you enjoyed this video, try checking out some of my others above. And if not, I hope to see you in the next one.